Hello everyone and welcome to the McMaster Demystifying Medicine channel. Today we will be discussing the Fragile X Syndrome and going over the symptomology, current treatment plans and other information pertaining to this disease. To begin we'll look at a statistic. Did you know that 5,500 males and 3,500 females in Canada alone have this disorder? That's about 1 in 8,000 males and 1 in 11,000 females. It seems like a small number when looking at the percentages, but in reality there's still a large number of people who have this disease. Moving forwards, we'll be looking at what really is DNA. So as you can see in this image here, these are the strands, and as the arrows are currently showing right now, these are called nucleotides, A, G, C, and T. And what happens when one of these changes due to a deletion, inversion, or a few other mechanisms of mutations is that it will induce a change in the gene depending on the region it is in, and it may lead to some sort of change in the protein production itself. Moving forwards, these are the symptoms of the disorder. So they include intellectual disabilities, slower development, motor impairment, along with behavior and emotional problems with aggression and anxiety. A lot of these are overlooked as mostly the physical symptoms are looked at, but considering the emotional problems with depression are very important to this disorder. And some of the other physical symptoms include autism, larger ears, heart murmurs, long face, and hyperactivity. So now we will be discussing the genetic basis of the disorder. So to begin, we will be looking at the Fragile X Mental Retardation 1 gene mutation. More specifically, this occurs at the gene locus XQ27.2. And this is just a simple notation for where this gene is actually located on the chromosome. So the way that this occurs is that there's a mutation and hypermethylation that reduces the protein production of the fMR protein and this protein is usually used in cell to cell connections in synapses so when there's decreased production it leads to a lot of the disorders seen here such as fragile X syndrome and autism also while taking a deeper dive to understand this disorder what occurs is that there's a trinucleotide repeat of CGG which is something that we discussed earlier is a nucleotide. So these nucleotide triplets occur in the five end of this gene, which leads to this reduced protein production. And ultimately the molecular mechanism behind this is that as there's hypermethylation, transcription cannot occur, and without transcription, translation cannot occur, and thus, in the end, proteins are not produced. Along with this, there are also sexual differences between male and females. So it can be said that males are about one and a half to two times as likely to develop the condition, which was seen earlier as one in 8,000 males develop the disorder in comparison to one in 11,000 females, which is a lower ratio. This is due to something that will be mentioned later on about how the disorder occurs on the X chromosome, which females have two of, which makes them less susceptible to these changes in comparison to males, which only have one. So moving on to the slide of said carriers and said mutations, as you can see, with a mother who passes on her X chromosome to both a son and a daughter, they can both be carriers or have full mutations. It all just depends. Versus if a father has it, there is less likely a chance of a full mutation developing. What this illustration doesn't show is that because the son has only one X chromosome, they are not able, like the females, to compensate for the deficiency in the protein production, whereas females can compensate for their lack of fMR production with the other X chromosome. But this depends on the situation. Also, it is important to note that there are a few different ways that you can get tested. So the main way is a blood test. And there are other methodologies that can be used before the child is born. And a lot of these include genetic testing for individuals who have a history or have family members who have a history of this. Currently, in terms of treatment, there's a neuropsychiatric approach being used, and this entails looking at the neuropsychiatric factors in diagnosing this neurodevelopmental disease. In the future, there are other trials and 
current trials that can be looked at at www.clinicaltrials.gov. Right now, there is a Stanford trial on the novel, on a novel clinical target, which is still recruiting. And there are some organizations that people can look at, such as Fraxa.org and FragileEx.org. That brings us to the end of our video, and I hope that you enjoyed and really learned something.